Hi, this is Shannon over at Reba. We're gonna go through a basic walkthrough and operation of a Sea-Doo watercraft. You have your main front compartment here. It's got two latches on the back of the sea -Dews. It opens up the front main compartment, which is very large. We're gonna move up to the handlebar control. On your right-hand side, you're gonna have your throttle. On your left-hand side, you're gonna have your IBR, which is Intelligent Brake and Reverse System. On the front of the skis, where your information center is going to be with all of your gauges for your fuel, RPM, and speed, and any other messages that may come up. Nice feature with the sea is they come with two different keys for speed. You have your regular key and you have your learning key. When the learning key is activated, it locks the ski down to 45 mile an hour approximately for safe operation for younger riders. When you engage the system, you actually put it on a key post in the center of the ski. Now you also have a glove box system in the center of the ski. Not a dry compartment, but still a great spot to put all your accessories. Also on your CD watercraft, you have an information center toggle button over here which gets you into different modes on your Sea-Doo gauge. You also have a start and stop button on your left handlebar. One of the new features on the Sea-Doo watercraft is gonna be their link system. The link system is a quick release on the back of the ski that allows you to attach all types of different accessories from Sea-Doo. To gain access to the Sea-Doo engine compartment, you would undo your rear seat and your front seat. This will allow you access to your engine compartment for all your maintenance needs. One of the unique features of the Sea-Doo watercraft is their closed loop cooling system. That is a heat exchanger system that does not circulate seawater through the motor and it acts as a radiator underneath the ski. One of the important notes on the back of the Sea-Doo watercraft is the IBR system. You want to be careful you don't have anything in the way of your IBR system. When you start the ski, the IBR will come down, find home position and go back up to center. If it hits anything, it's going to give you a code on your dash and you don't want to get anything in the way and crush or hurt anything. One of the things to note also on the back of the CD watercraft is your flush attachment. This is where you would flush your motor after use. You want to attach a standard garden hose, start your motor first, flush it for two minutes as per the manual, turn off your garden hose and let it run for another 10 or 15 seconds. One of the accessories you can purchase in addition is going to be a quick flush system which makes flushing your ski a lot easier. You would put in your quick connect system here and attach with your standard garden hose. Also on the rear of your sea water watercraft, you have a drain plug on each side of the ski. Make sure those are in every time you put it in the water. They do have a retainer, so once you're done for the day and you take this out, it'll stay in place. One of the unique features on the sea water watercraft is the computer controls the break-in period. It will slow the throttle response and the speed and RPM for the first five hours and then unrestrict up until eight hours. You will not have full power of the ski until the break-in period ends approximately about eight hours. We recommend that you fluctuate your throttle during the break-in period in the first 10 hours to break in your motor properly. Your first service is recommended at the 10-hour break-in period. If you have any further questions or concerns, please contact us at the Reaver family. Thank you for watching.